good one. Oh yeah, just gonna boat flip him. Holy cow, Andy. <laughs> Andy. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Full of Fishing with your captain, Andrew Full, from the Serious Angler Network. Today, we're going to be talking lipless fishing, lipless crankbaits, and not just lipless crankbaits, but fishing them on the yo-yo technique and the three most important things you need when it comes to fishing the yo-yo technique with a lipless crankbait. Number one, most important thing that you need when it comes to fishing a lipless crankbait, that is going to be the rod. There are many rods on the market that are built specifically for lipless crankbaits. Some excel at steady reeling, some excel at yo-yoing, but the one that I like the most is the Alpha Angler Chatterbound. This rod was originally designed for chatterbaits, but it also doubles as a really, really good yo-yoing lipless rod. So the cool thing about this rod is it's a composite glass combo. So what that means is the back of the rod has a lot of backbone because it's composite, it's stout, but it's also got a really soft, forgiving tip that will really allow you to be able to drive those treble hooks home and also keep those fish pinned on really long casts. Um, it's lightweight. It's perfect for that 12 to 17 pound test flora, whatever your flavor is for fishing a lipless crankbait. But um, down in the description, I'm gonna link everything that's in this video. I should have mentioned that beforehand. But this rod, I think you would not be disappointed in it if you did try it. Like I said, everybody has their favorites, but this one, I have found that it is the perfect balance of backbone to drive it home on a long cast with the soft tip to be able to keep these small trebles in that fish's face pin so they don't come off. Number two most important thing when it comes to yo-yoing a lipless bait is the reel. You need a high speed reel that's able to cast super far distances, can hold a lot of line, but also be quick enough to catch up to the fish as they smoke it and run towards you or run off to the side and knock a ton of slack in your line. I like a 7-2 or an 8 to 1 gear ratio reel. Um, that is because when you're yo-yoing the lipless bait, the one of the most important things to do is to rip it on slack line so you feel it halfway through as you're popping that rod. And the 7-2 is going to allow you as you rip and yo-yo, as the bait is falling back down and you feel that dunk and they're swimming at you, you can really reel into them quick and hammer and drive that hook home. I'm like, not a straight over the top hook set, but a three quarter sweep and pull and even walk back while reeling. Cause those treble baits, you really gotta get those hooks engorged in that mouth because it's one of those things big large mouth big small mouth love to throw treble hooks so i will always go with a high speed gear reel seven to eight to one um with 15 pound fluorocarbon on here it is cigar brazex i believe which is a red labeled line um because it's making a lot of contact with the bottom and shell and grass etc it's important to have a fluorocarbon line that's not going to get nicked up too bad. So you have the comfortability and confidence that when you drive that hook home, that you are going to be able to land your fish. The third most important thing to a lipless bait crankbait setup is the bait itself. Now, everybody's going to have their favorite lipless crankbaits for steady retrieving. Slow hops will steady retrieving. But for yo-yoing specifically, there is only one bait that I feel that you need and that everybody should have in their arsenal for yo-yoing lipless baits specifically. That is going to be the Jackal TN series. This is a 60. Look how chewed up that bait is. This bait in the last few weeks has caught a ton of fish. Every fish catch in this video has been caught on this TN60 right here. Um, the reason why I love this bait is that it is a tungsten lip on it. So as it rips on the yo-yo, it falls nose down and it will sit on the bottom like this. And then when you rip it, 
it'll pop up and then come right back down on a shimmy and stand almost straight up on that nose depending on how much pressure you have now cadence is key when you are yo-yoing it and this is a tn60 so i can fish it relatively quick but the biggest thing the biggest thing that i mentioned already previous previously in this video is it all depends on how you actually rip that bait up if you're ripping it on tight line so Let's take a step back here and think about jerkbait fishing. You never rip a jerkbait on taut line. It always has to be slack because you're knocking the slack to get that jerkbait to move. It's the same thing with yo-yoing a trap. So when I come down to, we'll call it like a three o'clock position with the rod, as I'm coming down and reeling to it, I'm always reeling up the slack. But when I come down with the rod in front of me, I want the line to be slack so when I rip that yo-yo, I'll put the rod on blank and rip. And as it's coming up, it doesn't start to rip until I'm at like six o'clock with the rod. So I'm popping it up or in this case, like a one o'clock because I went from three to one to noon, which would be high up. So when you're coming up and you hit that one o'clock, you're gonna feel that bait hop. And the reason why I like to hit it on slack line is because I don't want to rip the bait way forward, like way forward. I want it to come up slightly, maybe a foot or two off the bottom and fall back down. Because it's a short, quick, little aggressive yo-yo. You don't want it to come way up because then the bait comes out of the strike zone. So ripping it on the slack line as you're coming through and reeling down is extremely important to get the perfect action out of the bait. Thank you to everyone who tuned into this video. If you thoroughly enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe as well. And leave a comment down below, maybe what your favorite uh, lipless style bait is to rip on the yo-yo technique. It's killer in the spring between like 42 to 50 degrees because those fish are just starting to get active. It keeps it in the strike zone longer. And if you love the tips, please, like I said, subscribe. Um, there's going to be more coming, all alpha angler based, best rods that I have found for the money, period. And we're going to do a video here later once I get some more rods in to describe what you can use all these rods for. So a little prelude into the future. But uh, for now, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day. Might have found a new spot. Dude, that's a five pounder. Oh my God. That's a giant smolly for this lake. Whoa. Look at how thick that thing is.